So in the last video, I told you that uh, for a bunch of new symbols that I'm going to introduce, I will just give you some syntax, some semantics, and then I'll save the rules uh, or the axioms and, and definitions for later for the next lecture. But that's a bit of a lie because I have already uh, introduced a symbol and introduced axioms for it, uh, and that's equality. So here's the syntax for equality, which we discussed way back in like lecture one or two or something, but now's the right time to bring it up. Uh, the way it works is if you have an equality, uh, if you have two terms, then you can stick an equal equality sign between them, and overall you will have a proposition. So this is like the grammar for how it works. And it should make intuitive sense that this overall should be a proposition because it's an assertion, right? It's saying something and it would make sense to put a period at the end if you wanted to. This equals that. It's like a sentence. Um, and then in green, uh, what I've written is the semantics for equality. When someone says x equals y, what they are trying to mean by that is going to be that x and y refer to the same thing. That's the idea, right? x equals y is supposed to mean like x is y. x and y refer to the same thing. Now, what I've written in green here is just the idea. It's like the intention. It's describing what we as the designers of this uh, formal system uh, would like to have make sense. So this is what we have in mind as we as we build the rules. It doesn't tell you it doesn't give you anything that you can work with in proofs. So this what's written in green doesn't help you prove anything. What does help you prove stuff is, uh, things like Axiom 1 and Axiom 2 that you've seen in Theorem 3 and Theorem 4. I don't know why I wrote that by itself. That's Axiom 1. Um, these these are uh, actual rules, kind of. I'm not calling them rules. Axioms and theorems that help you to prove things regarding equality. Um, so one hopes that they capture the intention that was laid out here in green. And uh, c coming soon also are Axiom 8 and Theorem 10, which will, which really should be included in this collection of stuff that helps you uh, prove things about equality uh, and also helps you make use of equality statements in your proofs. Uh, next, I'm, I'm going to introduce a brand new symbol. So the new symbol is this. Uh, this is called the membership symbol. So uh, if you put a term on either side, it gives you a proposition. That's it. That's the grammar of it. And the way to interpret what it means is when someone writes uh, a term and then this thing and then a term, like x, this thing, and then a, then the way to read this is x is in a. So I like to read this as in. x is in a. Um, and what it means is X is a member of the set A. So the intention, the idea, is that when you see this, it's asserting, it's a proposition, and it's asserting that A is a collection of some kind. It's a set, so it's some collection of stuff. And X is part of that collection. It's a member of that collection. Uh, that's the intention, but it's not stated very precisely. And even if it were... Uh, it's not really something we can use for the sake of proofs. So for the sake of making arguments uh, to understand the mechanics of how this works, we're going to need Axiom 5, and that is coming next time. Uh, for now, I just want you to understand the grammar and what it's meant, what it's intended to mean. Um, and next, oh, this is a mistake here. Uh... I'm introducing, let me do this one by one here. Let me do this in steps. So I'm introducing this notation. And notice the curly braces, not parentheses, but curly braces with a bar. Um, you can put a bar or a colon or both. A barbell is what I've been using in, in the notes. Nobody uses that, but uh, just to mimic the notation that I've been using for quantifiers. Uh, you can put a variable here, so any variable. So I'm going to put x as like a model situation, but you can put any variable here. And here, you can put any proposition. 
then overall this becomes a turn. Now, uh, the bar is something you've seen before. It helps remind you that the variable has become bound. So this is our third and final situation uh, where a variable can become bound in, in a, a string of symbols. Um, the previous situations were ones where you have quantifiers. Uh, there is one huge difference about the notation for quantifiers. So other than the fact that it's parentheses rather than curly braces, there's a huge difference, which is that the entire thing becomes a proposition, not a term. So for all x, x is green. That's like a sentence. It's saying everything is green. You can put a period at the end, and that makes sense. But here, this new newfangled construction that we're making is a term. So it does not make sense to put a period. In fact, this is not saying anything. It's referring to something. It's referring to some object. Okay, so what object is it trying to refer to? Time to bring in the semantics and explain the intention of the symbol. So when we write this, this uh, refers to, so notice I'm using it kind of like a noun, it refers to something. This refers to the set of x's such that phi is true. Okay, now I told you the x was a bound variable, right? The x is a bound variable here. That means I should be able to describe what this is referring to without mentioning x, because x is like a dummy variable. It's not really there. So let me explain um, or get into how that how that works. Uh, so everything we're going to talk about now is all semantics, is what things are intended to mean. It doesn't really help you with uh, writing proofs, but it helps you interpret what's going on, which indirectly helps you with writing proofs. But what will actually be a, a literal component of your proofs will be Axiom 5. So that's coming soon. We'll talk about that in the next lecture. For now, I want to uh, focus in on, on the semantics of this symbol. So let's look at some examples. OK, so here are three gr totally grammatically correct constructions. So the syntax is correct here. And I want to look at the semantics. What do these mean? So. This, if I just follow the uh, principle that I wrote in green here, it refers to the set of x's such that, so this is the set of x's such that x is green. So one way to describe it is to just write the set of x such that x is green. But remember, x appearing behind the bar here, that is a bound variable. So uh, here in this term, not a proposition, but a term, in this term, x is not really being mentioned. It's not really about x. It's just a placeholder. It's uh, acting like a blank that could be filled in. So how, how do I describe this without mentioning x? Can I describe this? Uh, yes, the set of x such that x is green. That's the set of green things. That's what it is, right? See, no x is mentioned there. There are no x's in that, in that description. And, and why did I put a period here? I don't know. I'm just used to putting periods at the end of things. But there should not be a period. This is not a sentence, right? And I wouldn't expect it to be a sentence. This is a term, not a proposition. So it's a thing. What thing? The set of green things. That's what it is. Um, how about this one? Here the y is bound, but the x is free, right? So this, whatever I... However I describe this, I've got to mention x. It is uh, referring to x specifically, but it's not referring to y. It doesn't really uh, care about y. y is not involved here. Uh, so this is, so the first way to describe it maybe is to allow yourself to mention the bound variable following the principle here. 
then this would be the set of y such that y is better than x. But I can say that in a better way. The set of y such that y is better than x, that's the set of things that are better than x. See, uh, no y's here. The bound variable does not need to be mentioned. Uh, but x has to be mentioned. That's a free variable. Uh, how about this one? The set of x, so first of all, it is uh, syntactically correct. It is grammatical. I've got a variable here, and I've got a proposition here. This is a proposition because it's a conjunction between two propositions. And these two are propositions because when we described the grammar for equality, we said an equality statement is a proposition. Okay, so how do I read this? The set of x such that x equals z and x equals y. So you could describe it as the set of things that are equal to z and equal to y. Maybe a smoother way to say it is a set of things that are both equal to z and equal to y. All right, so that's that's the semantics. Let's modify this in one uh, small way to make it more complicated, um, just to have an, a better example. Well, let me leave that and just edit it. So how about the set of x such that x equals z, and for all y, Um, x is better than y. All right, so how do I describe this? It's the set of things that are both equal to z and Now I don't like this word both. I don't know why. The set of things that are equal to z and also... So how would I read this blue part? X is... For all y, x is better than y. It's saying x is better than everything. So And also uh, better than everything. So this here refers to the set of things that are equal to z and also better than everything. And you see uh, only z got mentioned, right? Only z got mentioned because only z is a free variable here. x is bound. You see x is in front of this bar, and y is bound in front of this bar. So this is really just about z. And um, while there are propositions involved inside here, there are propositions getting involved, um, overall what we have is a term. It's referring to an object. It's the set of things that are equal to z and also better than everything. That's something. It's some set. Okay, and there's one last symbol that you need to know about in order to uh, do the quiz for today and to uh, collect all the symbols from the section that we're on. And that's this symbol, which is an inclusion symbol. Um, and the idea is that you can put any term here and any term here, and what you get overall is a proposition. So the same grammar as equality or membership. Put a term, put a term, and overall it's a proposition. It's saying something. It's asserting something um, rather than referring to, to something. And for the semantics, I'm going to say when someone says A and then this symbol and then B, that means a is a subset, let me write that more clearly, A is a subset of B. And I'm not going to go into it anymore now. So uh, what does subset mean? Uh, forget about it for now. It's actually too difficult to be very precise about what this kind of thing means without actually going to the rule 
uh, going to the actual definitions. So for us, it will be definition six. So you want to know what subset means, that's coming soon. Um, so I'm not going to leave you with very much for the semantics here, but you do need to know at least the, the grammar of it, the syntax. So somehow uh, it sounds like it's saying something similar to uh, membership back here. X is a member of A. This is saying X is a, uh, you know, A is a subset of B. Sounds kind of similar, but it's actually very, very different. And we will uh, see the details as we when we look at the definition later on. Uh, right, uh, before I end today's lecture, uh, one last thing I should give you now that I'm introducing the symbols is how to make the symbols in LaTeX. So equality is just an equal sign. You can just type that on your keyboard. Uh, the membership symbol is backslash in, and usually it reads nicely when you say it that way. So if you want to say X is in A, then and you can just type this in, in our Nectar channel if you want to. Just put dollar signs to enter into math mode, just like you would in LaTeX. Then you do X backslash in, and then a space, and then A. And you have to put a space so that it doesn't think that you're trying to put the command in a, right? So this would be how you would typeset this. So just demonstrating here, um, here I've got a LaTeX uh, editor, and you do X in A like that, and compile it, and you get this nice typeset version. Now, for this one, uh, you have to typeset the curly braces somehow. And that uh, is not as obvious as you might think in LaTeX. So part of the problem is that LaTeX will use curly braces to group things. So it's like a, an internal symbol that LaTeX is using for, for a different purpose, not for the sake of displaying curly braces. So for example, for example, if I go here into math mode, between dollar signs and I type curly braces x bar uh, capital phi like that then look what it displays when I create it uh, there's no curly braces so again that's because the curly braces are being used for grouping if I want to make a left curly brace I should do backslash left cur curly brace and if I want to make a right curly brace I do backslash right curly brace and that seems to work um, so to make this symbol in LaTeX, do that. You're sort of escaping, this is called escaping the, the curly brace. And for this one, you do this. And often, you know, I, I find that when I'm looking at this, the variable X is way too close to the bar here. So sometimes I put in a space. If you want to put in a space, you can do backslash space like this. And now it looks a little bit better. You might think that's too much space. Backslash comma is is also a nice uh, predefined amount of space, and it's a little bit less. And now I think it looks it looks good. All right. And finally, this symbol uh, for this one, you can just do backslash subset eek like this, and that will do. All right, so uh, I'll see you next time.